so they're made uh, shorts of Belfast and um, yes yeah, so they're made for anti-ship anti sort of submarine and whatever and then they were made uh, carried on into the rescue role for down in you know on the sea well, on, the, on the wings there then with them that big hole is they used to slide racks out that's what them racks they slide them out and bombs on them. <coughs> to drop um, you know on, on submarines subs on surface um, obviously is it famous for being in spit hurricane mustang lank mosquito whatever 27 litre v12 and they started off around sort of 900 horsepower and in the end they had them up producing sort of 16 1700 horsepower later marks and that some even went even further but in general use so they basically <laughs> nearly stuck another thousand horse into them packard ones produced a little bit more power and were a lot more reliable because they were on a production line machined production line where the rolls royce versions were basically hand built so uh that's in the colors of one six one squadron which so they would use that to drop and pick up agents in france um and they think about one six one squadron because they was soe and the special ops they didn't just start they had hudson's they had um sterling's well they even had you know say big four engine bombers the top size of the length yeah they and so like they would drop into fields in france to grab an agent or you know maybe drop off some notes and grab some information and drop a guy off where the the biggest stuff the hudson's might drop out um two or three agents and then the, the sterlings would be gone over places like denmark and they'd be resupplying they might drop out a string of agents yeah. parachute mode or they might just drop canisters full of guns and, and supplies so uh, 161 and 138 they had um, a variety of aircraft for a variety of roles but they, they were flying when the other bugger was that's it so when when the moon was at its brightest they stopped all the bomber ops because you were just a sitting ducks like daylight yeah these poor buggers were going out at 200 feet across the channel and dropping in you know because they needed to see what they were doing um, that, they even had dumper spears back in World War II. You got no fear in around the turret, which is a British one had, British built one, and it is in a different position. Because I think, aren't they further that way, Paul? I think they're further that way, aren't they? But anyway, the turrets are in a different, yeah, made up as they're in a different position on the Canadian, and they're, they're a low profile turret. Mosquito. So the Mosquito, you'll see that while well, you'll probably see the B-17, which is a big four-engine American bomber uh, with a crew of 10 and had 50 cal machine guns and whatever. It's why it's called the Flying Fortress. The Mosquito, if you look at the size of this now, when you see the B-17, how much bigger it is, but the Mosquito could carry twice as much, twice as fast, twice as fast. I think is number two. Oh, yeah. Prototypes are number two, I think. So it's the first of the British ones. So they used this one for the experiments, you know. Um, in fact, there's, there's here or there, but there is actually a point where the crew can bail out. Yeah, there's actually like a, a step and a shoot down, so they, they actually bang it, so if they got in that much trouble. But the development, if you look at it, is, so you got TSR2, <coughs> which was phenomenally advanced for its time. It was uh, an agreement with the Americans that instead of us building our own aircraft, we would buy the F-111. As it turned out, we didn't. But under the agreement, we were even told that we not only had to stop producing it, we had to cut up all the jigs so we could never produce it. Yeah. So it was, yeah. It, if you look at what the tornado did, the, you know, multi-roll combat, what it could do, all the different roles it could take. This was the forerunner of that, really. That's where all the technology came from. Using um, Olympus engines. So yeah, so you got Olympus in that. You got Olympus in Concorde, Super Olympus. Obviously, in the Vulcan, you had the, just the, like the the earlier 300 series Olympus.
Yeah, the bit where you get out quicker. Yeah, yeah. Skype action. Yeah. <laughs> you do down there get sucked in deep. <laughs> There's a cockpit all the way up there. It's very limited view for Absolutely incredible. There's the link. Swordfish. Lightning, Vulcan. Spit down there. The, the Vulcan, um, we had these obviously right through to the eighth when the Vulcans broke out, what they used on the Black Buck missions. So they went and dropped 21,000, um, 21, 1,000 pound bombs, which they could still have. Same as <laughs> Saunders. <laughs> Chris Dark and just cracked that. Have you seen if Kurt's got any um, <laughs> So yeah, it's um, yeah, yeah, conventional bombs or they were nuclear. Take, yeah, they take things like the blue steel. So the idea would be fly low level right across to Russia, pop up, thump into Moscow or the Kremlin, turn and go. That's what they would have used that for that and then carried on its own. But as I said on the Fulton's Black Buck they used conventional bombs. They also hung pylons under the wings, which they fabricated at the airfield um, back in the UK, and then they dropped a, basically a missile off that would attack the anti-aircraft guns um, on Stanley Airfield. So 74 Squadron Lightning. Is that silly bollock? <laughs> 74 Squadron Lightning, and they were obviously, uh, they were cultural for a lot of their time, RAF cultural. Um, and then there's obviously other squadrons which were um, places like Binbrook and so on and so forth. Which is where they finished their time in about, was it 88? I think at Binbrook. Like eight, yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 One oh nine was the original Daimler Benz engine, and then there was a two seat one of them. Now the one that had the what was a nineteen forty four Messerschmitt built one oh nine. The engine was sit like a Packard. You got Corsair through there. Do I have a love hate relationship with? P51, of course. We're now in the hangar where they've got the privately owned aircraft, and obviously some are being worked on at the time, uh, such as this B17, which is obviously having a good old service. Sally B. Ooh, very, uh, very erotic. Western Sea King there. What do you think of that, Kurt? That would do us to go down the supermarket in, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little. Yeah, <laughs> but very effective you know, in its time. In its time, you very sure? effective. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looks like a shopping trolley. I don't like. That. I mean, <laughs> I, yeah, it is a shopping yeah. trolley. Yeah. It is, isn't it? I don't like helicopters. I just think they're like a, a taxi with a rotary clothesline on top. <laughs> so I don't trust them. <laughs> Bomb. Or doodle bug as they were known. 434 was used in uh, things like a bridge too far, stuff like that. When the young Dutch lad is up on the push bike coming up the track and it flies over, it's flown by Neil Williams at the time. Um, and obviously then famously Ray Hanna got her back to the UK and found one of the cylinders has been smashed completely off 
and one had been broken up shit, she still kept flying. This chunk of metal flapping around, whatever. So they, they take some punishment. And you got the Blenheim, which over the years has seen several rebuilds because of various incidents and whatever. Start off like a long nose type, and this is the earlier short nose Blenheim. You got spits again. <coughs> over there is a Bouchon, which is a very much like a uh, Messerschmitt 109, but it was built under license in Spain and used, funny enough, a Merlin rather than the Daimler Benz engine. And they were used, I think this one and another one were actually used in the Battle of Britain film, in the actual movie. Chipmunk over there, another spit. So obviously, this is where I spend a lot of my time stuck in the back turret on the Super Boss. So these were a torpedo bomber. Um, the RAF had some, the Australians had some, but the majority of them were for the US Navy. <coughs> um, so you had bombs or torpedoes in there, and you had all the radio crew, radio up there, pilot there, and then you had the radio and the gunner down the bottom of the belly and the gunner up in the top turret. And George Bush Senior just passed away, 41st president. Um, he was a pilot of one of these back in, in World War II. <laughs> Propeller on the front provides forward thrust, and the forward thrust then makes the blade spin. That's what gives you lift. The top, the top blades aren't powered. You're looking at 80s. Oh yeah, back in his prime that was, isn't it? Prime. Is he yeah. stuck with that? His long hair. Yeah. Probably yeah, He's the operator there. But... Okay, so chat, what we've got here. Today we'll be patrolling uh, the south end, you know the route, and uh, we'll be going on to uh, Ford, which is down in Hampshire. You know we've got all our bearings, 27, the 10, and the call signs here is Rutley, and everyone just keep clear, and remember, beware of the Hun in the sun. <laughs> There's the... Well, what was used in the Battle of Britain film as a Heimdall, but it's actually again a Spanish built variant and that, had, that actually had rather than the Yumo engines, the original ones that had the Rolls Royce Merlins again uh, as a, a licensed built aircraft they used that in the film about the Britain and it was one of these where I said about that MH434 being flown by Neil Williams in the bridge too far it was one of these that Neil got killed in bringing one of them back from Spain in 1976, 77, 1977. Well, here we are in the American hangar now. The bigger scale here, B-52. Look at the ripples on that, the white hanging off there, those ripples, all that skin. Yeah. Right? So we've got F-111. F-111. A-10. A-10. Uh, F-15. F-15. There. Uh, we've got, got Huey down there, haven't we? Yeah, it's a Huey. There's a B-29 Super Fortune uh, there, back there. what uh, yeah. dropped the atomic bombs. You've got various early biplanes, yeah. P-51s, P-47s. Yeah. And then the other side here, the other side of the 52, there's a uh, Phantom F-4. F-4, yeah, yeah. And there's at the back, we'll have a look at in a bit, there's the SR-71. Oh, black I think over there somewhere, there should be a B-24 as well. Yeah. But uh, we'll get down that side. This is one of the most interesting exhibits here. And you might be wondering what this is. It's actually part of Saddam's super gun in the uh, Iraq war. And he <laughs> passed it off as a bit of oil pipe. But um, blimey O'Reilly, that flange is Probably eight or ten inches thick. Huge thickness. And probably again the wall of the of the barrel itself. 
is also probably must be that as well. Just to be fair, fantastic bit of engineering. You know, there's a believe it or not, a manned gun turret. Now that sphere is about four foot in diameter, I should think. Quite exactly how you're supposed to operate that. Um, or even get in it, to be fair. Amazing, don't know if I'd get in there. Oh, yeah, we've got a we got a P51 Mustang, B24. There's the A10 with the, with the main armament, the Gow 8 Avenger, 30 mil Gatling type gun, uh, 4,200 rounds a minute. Just an awesome weapon that is. Oh, we're in the land base hanging now. Some lovely bits of kid in here. Let's go and have a look. Right, we're in the First World War section now with artillery pieces from both sides. US and British. A German light trench mortar. There's a little last thing there, isn't it? Be all strong. It's a lot of this stuff would be all strong. Yeah, that's interesting. Look where that's. Um, had an impact just up there on the barrel. So, you can see that rifle barrel in that is as well. It's a German 21 centimeter, yeah, 21 centimeter heavy howitzer. Obviously hit by something fairly potent there. Getting into the Second World War now. This is a British 3.7 inch anti-aircraft gun. Yeah, I know, the, 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 the sets are amazing. The effort they've gone to to dress the sets, sort of thing. Uh, what have we got here? T-34? T-34? No. What is it? Yeah, T-34. T-34. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Jack Pants, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good demonstration of how thick the side armour is, isn't it? Yeah. 30 mil? 40 mil? Come on, there's got 50 odd mil there. 50 mil? Nearly. Yeah. And then you've got all the front armour, which is even thicker. I mean, yeah. They take a bit of a punch. It's a Tiger chassis, isn't it? But, um, Got no, turret. no turret. No turret. No. What is that? Yeah. Panther? Mm -hmm. Conqueror. It's Conqueror, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's got to be a chieftain. Yeah. And then you've got a uh, challenger in the corner. Sean Wop, Challenger 2 at the minute, I think, isn't it? It's the current, the yeah, moment. current British MBT. Right, we've got a Chrysler A57 multibank engine here. What's that in, Michael? Uh, same sort of thing you'd find in like the Shermans. So <coughs> this is basically, you've got five um, <laughs> engines all bolted together. Uh, done by Chrysler. You obviously had the Detroit, yeah. you had the radial yeah. engine, and you had the Ford uh, lumpy as well, so they, they all had different engines in different variants of uh, Sherman. Yeah. And this is one of them. Are you sure you're on that in a major, you reckon? Uh, 
tougher. Yeah, I reckon probably George, you could put it into a major if you want to. Sorry, David. That's quite all right, George. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Ben. Sorry. I don't mean to lean on you like that. Sorry. It's like being on the school bus, isn't it? <laughs> Here comes another special bus, special delivery, including Mucker.